Praise God. Hallelujah. Why don't we all stand? Amen. God bless you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to sing that song, Hosanna, Hosanna. You are the God who saves us. Amen. Let's start off with that song. Amen. It's two slow songs tonight. Amen. And we'll get to the message. And then we'll rejoice tonight. Amen. Here we go. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's clap our hands. Praise is rising. Praise is rising. Turn to you, man. Hope is stirring. Hope is stirring. Hearts are yearning for you. Man. We long for you, man. Because when we see you, because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all of our praise. Hosanna, Hosanna. Have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Hear the sound. Hear the sound of hearts returning to you. We turn to you. Yes, amen. In your kingdom. When we see you, we find strength to face the day. Yes, amen. In your presence. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. Washed away. Hosanna in the highest statement. Save us, God. We praise you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to go right to the slow song, This Is My Desire. I'm going to remember that song, amen. Hallelujah, man. Let's sing that song, This Is Our Desire to Honor You. Let this be the cry of your heart. Let's sing it together. Here we go. This is my desire to honor I 
within me. Praise God again. We thank you. God, have your way within our heart. We thank you, Jesus Almighty God. We are going to sing one more. Why don't we sing that song, Lord, uh, I stand in your presence. Lift your hands again. Let's thank God. Amen. Let's bow before his feet and thanking him for all that he's done. Amen. Here we go. Yes. Lord, I stand in. is all different. Man. Here we go. Keep the spirit. Amen. Here we go. Lord, I stand in your presence, broken before you, and my heart's desire is to love and adore you. sweet surrender and I've never known a mercy so tender it's healing my heart it's healing my soul for yes amen I bow down the beginning and the end we thank you jesus name amen let's bow our heads together jesus name amen one more time tonight
Amen. We'll do this one. Praise God. Amen. We're going to bow our heads together. Amen. God bless you all. We're going to just stand before the kingdom and the throne of God. Amen. The Bible says in Hebrews 4, 17, come boldly before the throne of God. Amen. That he may help you in a time of need. And that's what we do every service. Amen. We establish the foundation of Jesus through worship and praise. And now let's go before him. Amen. As we pray in uh, thankfulness of God. Amen. Don't forget, pray for my pastor as well. Human being just like me. Amen. And I send him a text of, of rejoicing and all that. There was a good report sent back to El Paso, Texas uh, from Roderick as well. And uh, I just, amen. It's it's good every once in a while to get a, t- a little rub on your shoulder, amen. And we thank you. Pat on the back. And uh, thankful for my pastor as well, amen. The vision continues. The fire is kindled. Let's go forward in Jesus' name, amen. There's churches all over that are praying, even for this little church here. And many that are abroad, amen. We're lifting up pastor uh, an assistant, Pastor Richard and Luz, uh, his wife, Contreras, uh, Pastor Ernie and Sandra Lopez. Let's not forget uh, Nick and Michelle Rogers in Kathmandu, Nepal, as they've landed there as well. Many of you are familiar with George and Jessica, his wife. That's right. He's in Tokyo, Japan. Amen. Common ordinary men, ex-gangster in the streets of El Paso is in Japan preaching the gospel. Who would have ever thought? Amen. And God is able to restore even the most broken of people and give them a purpose and a plan. This is why I love our fellowship as they roll the dice with broken people. Amen. College degree doesn't matter. Amen. It's preaching the gospel through faith and unity. Let's pray for Andre and Marina Stevenson in uh, Batambag, Cambodia. And then uh, locally in the States here, Raymond and Marissa Hernandez that are in Medford, Oregon. And that is Pastor Puglisi's daughter right there, married to a troubled individual. Amen. Amen. Now he's a good man as well. We He's a great brother. We keep in contact as well. Pray for them there in Medford, Oregon, as they're preaching the gospel as well. Amen. We're going to bow our heads together, lifting up all our family members, people that we love. Let's not forget uh, Brooke and Aaron House. We're praying for our sister here tonight. Amen. That God would just continue to help her and keep her in good spirit. Amen. As she prepares for that major surgery. Uh, and we pray that everything goes according, according to the plans of God. We're lifting up Kenny Mitchie. We're going to pray uh, for all those. Uh, Joseph, that's Benny's brother. Lifting up our brother Landon as well, uh, Jimmy Lauder, all of the family there for uh, Jackie Hansard. Amen. God's hand be upon them. Why don't we lift up uh, Mary and uh, Lori? They were here this morning. Lots of needs. Amen. So we're going to pray for their family as well, that God would just vindicate and help. And brother uh, uh, Joe Aquiles, we're lifting up your wife as well, Anna. Anna, we're going to pray for her as well. Put her before the throne of Jesus that he may help and heal. And this time of need, amen. So let's pray together in faith and unity. We're going to lift our voice, amen. Let's thank the God of heaven. I'll open this up in prayer. Father, we thank you here tonight, amen. We come so grateful for the precious blood of Jesus Christ that sanctifies us, that justifies us, and cleanses us of all unrighteousness and sin. We thank you here tonight, amen, that it is not by works, but by your grace that we are saved. Thank you, God, amen, for your consistent love, your unfailing love that is for your people here tonight, God. But we have needs, O Lord. Help us here as we cry out to heaven that you would help and intercede for those who have no faith. We pray for those that are brokenhearted tonight, amen, that you would touch their heart. Give them hope as you gave us hope on the day of salvation. We're praying for those that have uh, difficulties, infirmities, terminal illnesses, chronic diseases. God, you are the healer of all healers. We will not limit your power. We will allow the Holy Spirit to move upon the assembly, touching the hearts of those that are broken and afflicted by pain that you would heal them and restore them in Jesus' name. God, help every man that is here today. Not only that, the women that are here to find their calling. Amen. Help this church to completely ignite God. Amen. Use us as a beacon of hope into a dying generation. God, use us. God, we are available. Here we are. Use us, God. And we thank you for all the men and women who have been faithful. Not only that, in the churches that are abroad, God, men that do not deserve to go to these places, but yet you have restored them. You have given them their dignity back and allowed them to preach the gospel into a world that is going to decay father thank you you are the god of second and third fourth fifth chances we're here tonight to lay down our sins god asking you to forgive us god of all our iniquities all our trespasses separate them as far as the east is from the west we're grateful we worship you we thank you in jesus mighty name and we said amen god bless you we're going to just have a seat right where you are I want to thank you for coming out tonight. Amen. I know that it's a sacrifice, beloved. Amen. I have an alarm clock too. And I I want to say, give me 10 more minutes, even an hour. Amen. So thank you for coming out tonight. Um, 
you know what? I'm going to keep what Pastor Roderick said. And he said, the mind can only handle what the rear end can take. Can you say amen? There's only so much that we can sit down before we start to say, all right, he better wrap it up. Amen. So I'm a respectful for that as well, but grateful that you came out tonight in Jesus' mighty name. I'm going to ask for two minutes. Can you all do that? I got to see what happened to the battery. I got new batteries. I There it was. One of those kids. Where are they at? Ducky? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Someone messed with the signal. It was on channel one when it was supposed to be on channel eight. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We're going to get to God's word uh, in just a moment. Amen. We are turning to John chapter 11 in the word of God. God help us there. And uh, I want to be preaching about the garments of our burial. I know that's kind of weird, right? Amen. So God help us with that uh, tonight in Jesus name. Amen. We do want to just take time to uh, give to the kingdom of God. I'm going to ask the brothers to come up. Sorry, a little out of it tonight. Amen. I'm going to have, oh, we'll just do Manny today. Amen. God bless you, brother. Amen. I know that we just finished a revival. I know that, what's that? Yeah. One second here. But what I'm saying is I know that it was pretty heavy, amen. But we, we send them off blessed, amen. Thank you for that. And I know that uh, finances are what they are, amen. But we still give an offering basket as part of our service. And we just give, amen, tonight, amen. If you can give, then God bless you. If you give your tithes, God bless you as well. But the Bible says again, let me just read it, amen. Each one of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, right? Not by force by the pastor. But it says God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. So we still give every service in light of all that is happening. Amen. Father, we just thank you. Oh, you know what, brother? Go ahead and bless the offering basket. Amen. Yes. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for that, brother. We'll pass the basket around. Amen. We give to the kingdom of God. We'll see when we have a further date. I have a, uh, a friend from North Carolina. He's an evangelist. It's not set in stone, but we need a break. Amen. To recover uh, from all of that. Brian McRae, he's out of the North Carolina church. In fact, he was born and raised in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Amen. So uh, that might be, in the sense, cheaper because he has connection to someone who lives here. I know they get expensive, but amen. It's good to have a new face to come minister the word of God, and God will help us with that. Amen. So Brian McRae, I'll put his picture up. I'm thinking this later down the road, November, December, and we'll see what it is. I need to connect with Tony where we can balance out revivals so that we're not doing them week after week because I know, trust me, even financially, it, it's, it's, it can be difficult as well. So we're looking at the mother church. Amen. They're having another revival. Amen. They just had one two weeks ago. I said, come on. I mean, pastor. Give some of those finances so we'll have a revival every month and you can take care of it. Amen. But they have uh, Fred, Fred Ruby. He's from the UK, originally from Tucson, but he's pastoring in the UK right now. And they're having revival as we speak in Jesus name, brother. Amen. So God bless you with that. One more report. I got the picture. It's not the best one, but there she is. Little, little Scarlett Reese. Amen. Yeah, she's, I'm telling you, Gabriel's, I mean, yeah, never, I was going to say Hispanics are short. Amen. But he's, Gabriel's probably about this high and his, his wife, let's go. Yeah, his wife, according to the picture, but they're very small people. So small people make small babies. Amen. But uh, so far, I'll give you else any update. They're still running some tests to make sure that everything's okay. Uh, but that's little baby Scarlet. Amen. So we thank God for that. I was eating with uh, Pastor Roderick. And he goes, I got to pray for her. Everyone's trying to claim the prayer. I said, 
<laughs> Wait a second. I, I, he, and he was eating. What was it? We were at Culver's, right? No. We were at Buffalo Wild Wings, and he's eating, and he made that face, like, claiming it, like, yeah, see this? I said, I said brother, I gave the word. <laughs> And that, that's what happens in the kingdom, beloved, amen. But all at the end is glory to God, amen. He's, he's the miracle worker. He's the one that allowed all this to transpire and to happen. So just keep her in your prayer that everything's okay. Organs are functioning accordingly. But they're, Nicole said that they are so in love. They're just, you know, here's a miracle baby, amen. And God has blessed her. So just pray for her as well. All right, amen. Let's get to the message. Let's turn to our Bibles, John chapter 11. And I'm hoping this would be very simple, but an impactful message. And I've called this one the garment of our burial off of John 11, 38 through 44. Amen. In the kingdom of God, God help me here today, amen. In the kingdom of God, so often because of sin, and I'm trying to figure out, Holy Spirit, speak now, help me out here. It is so often in the Christian faith Look at that picture right now. That after being cleansed of our former sin, amen, God giving us new garments, clean as snow, that we will find within our heart to go back to the burial site and dig up who we used to be. The imagery, I can't even explain it here today, of how defiling it would be to go into a burial site and to pick up a garment that has been laying there for years. Some of you have been saved 15, 20 years and say, I want to put that garment back on. God has called us, amen, to continue in the garments that he has cleansed us with and washed us with. Can you say amen? amen. There was a story uh, in 2021. Here are these individuals. I don't know anything about their life, amen, but they passed away due to a drug overdose in 2021 of April Kyle Betts on the left and David Brady found dead in Jacksonville, Florida. And they were both found in their apartment and their bodies would end up in the wrong funeral home with the wrong families. When uh, David Betts ended up in Waco, Texas, where his parents were, mother was excited in the sense to finally get to see her little baby, right? The one that she raised to be found in a lifeless form to see his body for one last time. And as they finally uncovered his body, she realized, she says, this is not my son. And the reason why that there was an issue that at the the, uh, uh, medical examiner that closed off the issue that had happened there when they finalized it before taking their body, they had placed a case number uh, on them. I don't know how the tag works, but they got swapped and the bodies ended up in other places. Now, the only way that they were able to find out what happened is that Kyle Betts on the left there, when he passed away, he was wearing the Jaguars hat, and they finally realized that it was the hat that was mixed up that had actually belonged to the other person, and by just human error, they mixed up the bodies and ended up in the wrong location. What's my point here today? The wrong attire can be caused to deter the faith that God had called you into. Now, let me just say that again with some clarity. Amen. The wrong clothing clothing caused wrong identity. Wearing the wrong garment caused there to be a confusion, and that wrong attire can be the cause of your fate. Let it never be us, beloved, to be found wearing our grave clothes. Can you say amen? We have been cleansed. We have been washed by the blood of Jesus, completely translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his righteous son, Jesus Christ. To be found in grave clothes, beloved, amen, could be detrimental even to our faith, amen. Let's the, let the word of God speak tonight as we get through this. 11, uh, John 11, verse 38, it says, Jesus was still angry as he arrived to the tomb. He was frustrated with Mary that lacked faith. A cave with a stone rolled across its entrance. And 39 says, roll the stone aside, Jesus told him. But Martha, the dead man's sister, protested, Lord, he has been dead for four days. I mean, imagine the stench. 
The smell was terrible, the Bible says. In verse 40, Jesus responded, Didn't I tell you that you would see the glory of God if you believe? And so they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, but I said it out loud for the sake of of all those people standing here. So Jesus was trying to show them, God can also hear you. I'm just using this as an example. Listen to me how I speak to my father because God will also listen to you. In verse 43, it says, Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, what did he say? Come out or come forth. And the dead man came out, his hand and feet bound in grave clothes, his face wrapped in a headcloth, and Jesus told them, the disciples around, unwrap him and let him go. Amen. Let us pray here tonight, amen, as we conclude this Sunday night, amen. Let the word of God speak richly to your heart, amen. Let him help you here tonight, beloved, amen, to change, amen, to remain in that clothes, that garment, amen, that pure garment of white that he has translated in, into. Father, we thank you in the name of your mighty son, Jesus Christ. And God, we're here rejoicing in the goodness and the gladness of our salvation, of good tidings and joy that you gave unto us through the promise of your spirit and the cleansing of the blood of Jesus Christ who has made atonement for us who are we're sinners. You have justified, you have washed, you have cleansed and sanctified us before the throne almighty. And we're here to thank you for that, God. Never let it be found within any heart here today to go back to the burial site of the day that we died to go back to the old ways. Let the dead remain dead. But those who are alive in Christ, let them prosper and grow in the newness of our new life in Jesus Christ. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. We all said, amen. amen. Both feet in the grave. I want you to think about Lazarus. This man was dead. D-E-A-D, -E -D, dead. I mean, he was dead as can be. Four days in the grave. And I believe that the word of God was trying to exhaust of the fact that we can be four days dead, beloved, and still be resurrected. Can you say amen? amen? Now, speaking spiritually, beloved, because every single one of us has a past in which we have lived in the, in the ways of this world. We were inventors of evil. How many here tonight? We found ways to sin. We invented ways to sin. Amen. I remember with my friends on a daily basis, he would steal his... Grandma's medication. How many know if you're desperate for a high, you go into the medicine cabinet? And we would look at the prescription on the bottle. It says, take two only. And we would say, let's take four. Let's just see where this will take us. I remember foaming at the mouth. Friends left me at a driveway, beloved. We were finding ways to get high. My mother found me there again, incoherent, unable. My best friend left me on the curbside. Says, I better go before they get me in trouble. I was working as a chef, oh gosh, <laughs> at a great American steakhouse in El Paso, Texas, a very fancy steakhouse. On break, I've shared with you before, I was inventing ways to get high. I went to the restroom when I wasn't feeling normal, needed to be high. I would go there, I would pump the soap out of the dispenser. I know, Jackie's like, amen. <laughs> and just sniff it. Beloved, it would take me on a high so much, my ears rang for three months. I couldn't figure out why. I said, oh, I've been sniffing soap. Yeah. Ringing just ooh, the three months. It wouldn't go away. I said, what's happening to me? I mean, we were as bad as it can get. Can you say amen? amen? This is the life that we came from, beloved. We were as dead as can be. We deserve the full portion of God's wrath and hell's jaws wide and open, amen, ready to consume us, but yet God died for us. To escape that life. It cost him his own life to shed his blood, to take us from that dominion of darkness and put us on a path so that we can slap out of our stupidity. Can you say amen? Look what Ephesians 2, 1 through 3 says. Once you were dead, the Bible says you were actually dead, declared dead, because of your disobedience and your many sins. You used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the power in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. I'll raise my hand first. 
And all of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and, insul and the inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger or wrath, just like everyone else. Amen. We deserve the punishment of God. I mean, sniffing paint thinner. I mean, we were getting to the point behind that 7-Eleven, like I told you, I can still see the flashbacks of just still being high of some kind of foreign substance. And then I remember one time I wanted to, I wanted to get taken to jail. I had a few warrants. Amen. So I intentionally was walking the streets at three in the morning that that party was over. I still had some high gravities and a backpack. I walked four miles to my friend's house at three in the morning, hoping that a cop would come and take me to jail. I'm not making this up. Amen. This is where my mind was. I just want to go to jail, just pay off the debt. I'll go in there, come back out, and then start drinking again, beloved. This was my mindset. Seven in the morning at the 7-Eleven, I can still remember on I-10 and, and Reynolds, there's a 7-Eleven that was there. I told my friend, meet me there. And we were already drinking at seven in the morning, ready to get the party started. Amen. This is who I was, beloved. But thanks be to God, amen, who found a man dead in his sins who saved my life, amen, put my feet on a solid foundation, amen, that I can stand and say, Jesus has changed my life. He has given me new garments, and I ain't going back to the grave clothes. Can you say amen with me? Amen. A picture to illustrate what the dead appeared to Christ, amen. I, I always wondered, amen, what do did, what did dead people look like in the eyes of Christ? Look at our main text. Jesus was still angry as he arrived at the, t at the tomb, a cave with a stone rolled across its entrance. Look what 39 says. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told him. But Martha, the dead man's sister, protested, Lord, he has been dead for four days. The smell is terrible. Amen. I know I used this picture once before. I'm going to use it again. It says here, the world sees through different lenses. You see the flesh, right? Here's this what they call beautiful in the world, the Kardashian. But can I tell you that in the spirit, I think this is how Christ sees them. Oh, he loves them in the sense he wants them to repent that they may come to life. Amen. But I wonder what I look like. I mean, I probably had limbs missing. I mean, just decaying entirely. So the Bible says there that, again, the Lord said, Lord, he has been dead for four days. The smell would be terrible. I looked at the scientific and a thorough study on the decay of the body. Can't you, my, I was going to get some pictures here today, amen, but I'd spare you that. It says 24 to 72 hours after death, the internal organs decompose. This is where things start to, you know, get a little rough. Three to five days, this is where Lazarus would have been after death. The body starts to bloat and body containing foam um, and blood containing foam leaks from the mouth and nose. I'm sorry for the imagery, but we have to understand the state of Lazarus. Eight to ten days, I mean, somebody find this brother. It says the body turns uh, from green to red as the blood decomposes and the organs in the abdomen accumulate gas. One month after dead, let's just go there, teeth and nails fall out and the body starts to liquefy. Well, thank God, amen, he stopped him at four days. Can you say amen? Lazarus, four days is enough, amen, because you're starting to look bad. Amen. And he saved him and caused him to rise from the dead. And Jesus had called him to do what? Amen. Look what 43 says. Jesus shout, shouted, what? Lazarus, come out. Day four. Rise from the dead, he would tell him at that very moment. And I, I mean, I don't know. I was thinking this again. That must have been some really strong coffee, amen, that Lazarus smelled after the four days. He, you know, he probably he said that, that had to have been some strong coffee at that very moment to cause Lazarus to say, hey, what's going on here? He rose from the dead in his grave clothes by the command and the voice of God. I mean, this blows me away. I've shared this before. Sometimes I'll, they'll pop up again. Amen. Wherever Lazarus was in eternity, the sound of Jesus Christ, the voice of the Lord, the authority of God, wherever he was, he says, Lazarus, and he was in eternity somewhere in a place. And 
come forth his, his spirit, return to his body at the authority and the command of the Lord. Can you say amen? That's how powerful Jesus Christ is. He said, you must return to your body. And that very moment, there was a walking, talking body that was fully aware of what was happening. You see, this brings a picture of our salvation. Amen. I mean, remember that day. We were walking corpses. How many know you don't have to be six feet in the grave to feel dead inside? I mean, I was as dead as can be. Asked my wife. I had no hope, no future. There was nothing uh, uh, optimistic about me. Everything was doom and gloom, party, and just get wasted because life is miserable. And there I was. Jesus called me, Vince, wake up and come out of the grave. And all of a sudden, my spirit was activated to the king of glory. I said, whose voice is that? And Jesus would speak back the voice of your creator. I've heard that voice before. For it is the voice of truth that speaks unto you. Salvation came in a very powerful way that just demonstrated the authority that God has to change people. I mean, he's still changing people today. Amen. How many know that when you get saved, you can't just stay the same? Amen. Things start to change in your life. I get it. We have fall down the step days. We can mess it up big time. Amen. I blew it big time. Amen. But things begin to change. Our conviction is different. We're not allowed to just continue in the habit of sin because the Holy Spirit is speaking now. We have been activated to Christ and he is talking to us saying, you are my son and I have a command for your life. Thank God. Amen. It was like the end of a black storm in my life. The calm of the sea where there's just a mist that is flowing and a peace that came over my mind. And I said, how is it that I can feel again? How is it possible that I can now hear the voice of my creator? I think, look at verse 40 in our text. He says to Martha, Jesus responded, didn't I tell you that you would see the glory of God if you believe? And all this time, beloved, I saw this as a book It was religious with no power. But on that day, August 10th, amen, it's been 13 years, celebrating again when God in his glory came up to me and says, didn't I show you, didn't I tell you that you would see the glory of God if you only believe? 13 years again, going strong for Jesus Christ. Yes, there's urges. Amen. Sometimes I pick up that shovel and say, I'm going back. No, I throw that shovel back away. said, I ain't going back for the grave clothes. Amen. Because Jesus has done a good work in my life. You see, when salvation is accomplished, there's an issue. Even at the day of salvation, you still have grave clothes that needs to come off. Amen? I mean, look at what happened with Lazarus and his story. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound in grave clothes, his face wrapped in headcloth. And Jesus told him, unwrap him and let him go. See, when we come into the kingdom of God, beloved... The grave clothes are still on, right? We're still wrapped in linen with the past that needs to come off. And Jesus has awake, he's awakened us from the dead. He's brought us up from the dead. But there's an issue that happens. We remain entangled in the bondage of the clothes that, in which we were dead in. And we need to take it off. Can you say amen? When I got saved, all, all the major problems that were internal, some of them still lingered. Amen. Right? There's some of you here today, you know you got saved, but there's some issues that's still there. And mine took some time for some brothers to say, hey, you shouldn't do that no more. <laughs> the preaching of the word of God began to convict me, and I had some linen on, and all of a sudden, the pastor would preach a message. I said, oh, I'm still wrapped at the arm here. And I would take it off, and little by little, as the Bible says again, there in 44, and the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound in grave clothes, his face wrapped in headcloth. And Jesus told them, the disciples, unwrap him and let him go. It was a preaching the faithful word of God through my pastor that it it started to untangle the mess I was in. There was a man alive, but there was grave clothes that needed to be unwound by my brothers and sisters to release me from the dead life, amen, as I stood there. But the issue is, even in 2023, beloved, is people still want to keep the grave clothes, amen. 
Say, brother or sister, you're free in Christ. Well, I want to keep this one. <laughs> you can, but God wants you to be free. The preaching of the word of God untangles all the mess that we have within our very lives. Depending on the faith and the sincerity sometimes of people's hearts, strapped linen can remain, amen. There's people that have a good intention to live for God, amen, but because of their past, they will hold on to a certain mentality. How many know what I'm talking about? And it's our responsibility to say, brother, do you mind if I unwrap you real quick? <laughs> Keep it on. Jesus has called his people to unbind his fellow brothers who have been tangled in the mess of sin. There was an individual, a tough gangster, who had gotten saved, amen. He was a very rough man, and they were out in the neighborhoods of L.A., amen. And so at that very moment, there were some uh, Christian believers that were outreaching at that place, and the Christians accidentally bumped into this very tough, ruthless gangster. I mean, one wrong stare, you'd be dead. And he bumps into them as they were sharing the gospel, and they start to mock the Christians, Right, you Bible thumpers, you losers, you serve a dead religion. There is no God. And the Christians stood there, they were sh shooken up by the circumstance. And all of a sudden, because they were in a wrong neighborhood in that outreach, came a rival gang that began to spray bullets all over the place. It hit that tough gangster that was mocking the Christians, falls to the floor, nearly dying. His friends abandoned him in the car that they were riding in, and the Christians came up to save him. They wrapped him up in bandages, amen, and tried to uh, stop the bleeding at that very moment, take him to the hospital. He's restored. I mean, that gangster was so blacked out only to find out when he would lift his eyes that the people that he mocked were standing there are the ones who took care of him. Amen. He, the true, true story here today, he would get saved. It took him time as the brothers were unwrapping those bandages again of the old life. And at the moment of baptism, before they said, hey, we got to bury our past. And the gangster's like, what do you mean? He says, the old has to die. We can't think like this anymore. All right, I'm hearing you. I understand. Okay, I, he was ready to become a Christian. So the first thing he thought was a, you know, an, an actual burial. So he got all his firearms, amen. <laughs> and he made a grave in his backyard. He threw all the firearms in there, ammunition, knives, brass knuckles. I mean, it all went in there. He buried his past. And all of a sudden, amen, he's ready for baptism. And as he's going into the baptismal waters, the, the testimony is this. At that very same time, that rival gang shot and killed his brother as he was being baptized and immersed into the water to rise up again. I mean, that's tough. You say amen. amen. As he got out, the news came. Mother came. They said, they shot your brother. He's dead. It was that rival gang. And everything that welled up in him, the natural response is, I'm going to what? Get him back. He rushed immediately home, found the gravesite in which the ammunition was in there. He's shoveling it out. To, and this is a symbol of us, beloved, beloved. When we want to go back to our lives, the first response is what? I'm digging up my past. I'm digging up my motives, my mentality, the way I used to think. I'm going to handle things the way that I used to be. And the Christians came. They said, you buried that. Don't bring it back up. Leave it alone. Let God handle this situation. You gave your life. You were dead in the baptismal waters to rise up in you. As he had his bandana on ready to take on the war, the Holy Spirit got a hold of his heart. Everything in him was ready to rip these people to shreds. And I get it. Natural response is to respond. But the Holy Spirit was able to soften his heart. I mean, imagine the brokenness of this individual. Very close to opening up that grave where his past remained. He was able to find forgiveness with the rival gang members. Testified publicly in the street that he was a new man. Amen. And at the very end, he testified that he went to that 
beachside there in L.A. He got all his weapons. He threw them out into the sea to make sure that he would never go back again. And this is what it's like for the kingdom of God, beloved. We've got to make some choices here. Because if we are those who draw back, we are they who have purposely intended to say, I want my garments back. The head bandana's got to go back on. I'm going to handle the things the way that I know will take care of the business because of this. But God, through his spirit, says no. How many know we need accountability in the house of God? Amen. We need people that love us that will say, you know what? You're wrong. I love how Pastor Roderick said, right? Best thing you could tell someone to find out who they are is tell them no. You'll see who they are. Amen. No, you're wrong. How would he say? 5,000 years of history in the land of China. He says, here I am, a black brother. I like how he said, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm black, he said. And I'm going to go to a nation with complete, a complete different culture, and I'm going to go over there and tell them you've been wrong for 5,000 years. I mean, some, the Holy Spirit's got to live in your heart for you to say that. To go into a culture and say, you've been wrong for 5,000 years of your history. Jesus is the way. It's through the accountability of God's church, amen, that we help people to find their way. John eleven forty four 44 says, And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound in grave clothes, his face wrapped in linen. Jesus told them, again, the disciples, what did he tell them? Unwrap him and let him go. Sometimes we need someone to say, hey, let me, <laughs> let me untie this. It's not for you no more. You don't need to wear grave clothes. Amen. Jesus has called the people to unbind the straps of linen to reveal what is in the inside. There's some good people that really want to do good, amen, but they've covered in grave clothes. I've met tons of people on my journey, amen, that have a lovely heart, amen, but they want that grave clothes. They say, I'm going to keep it. This is who I am. It's part of who I am, my culture, or whatever, the, 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 what they're thinking within their mind. But I'm here to tell you, according to the word of God, he has called us to place on a new garment, amen. The garment of our Lord Jesus Christ that is pure as snow for every single one of us. And some people don't want to change. I prayed the sinner's prayer, I'm good. 1 Corinthians 6, 9, it says, Or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? He says, do not be deceived. Neither the sexual immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, I know, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanders, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Look what it says in verse 11. And that is what some of you, what? Were. were. You were that. And he says there, but you were what? Washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God. And Paul is making a point here today. He says, we are not those who shrink back to the old ways because the grace of our Lord has cleansed us. He literally scrubbed us down out of that grave. He says, man, four days dead, you stink. I got to wash you. And he sanctified us, placed us in a position of honor to say, I want to use you as a tool for my kingdom. Amen. And justified, amen. How many are grateful for justification? In short, it means justified just as if we never sinned. That's the way he sees us. When I see justified, I always think of my head just as if I've never sinned. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God, I'm amazed of how many Christians go back to their tomb to give up their grave, the clothes that they have, for the stench of grave clothes. Romans 6, 1 through 4, it says, What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? What does he say? By no means. KJV, never let it be so. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, 
we too may live a new life. Thankful for God. Amen. There's a tomb that exists in my spirit and in my mind of August 7th of 2010. There's a tomb. We all know the day we were born, but we don't know the day that we leave. Amen. But in Christ Jesus, my death date was August 7th, 2010. I thank you, Jesus. Vince is dead. He died 13 years ago. And he remains there. Because I never want to go back to that place to dig him up. <laughs> I wouldn't have my family. Wouldn't have my children. Wouldn't have ministry. I'd be a dead man. Rotting corpse. And completely hopeless. God forbid in my heart and even in my life, that I would ever revisit that grave to open it up again. It's not going to happen. So then why, the people of God, do we go to places like that? And I mean, we get, I know we can get mad. I know that we can fall short of the glory of God. Amen. I'll raise my hand again. But Lord, help us when we say, I'm going back to the old life. This ain't working out. Isaiah 52, 1 through 2, it says, Awake, Zion. Clothe yourself with strength. Think of Lazarus. Put your gar garments of splendor, Jerusalem, the holy city. The uncircumcised and defiled will not enter you again. Can you say amen? He says, it will never come back to you again. Clothe yourself. Shake off your dust. Rise up. Sit in throne, Jerusalem. Free yourselves from the chains on your neck and that is a promise to all those who trust in Jesus Christ it's an encouragement and exhortation for us to take and say don't go back place keep the clothes of honor and the crown that God has given you it would be a defilement to go back and put a stain on those garments again and the way they stay pure is through the faith in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit that fills our life put on the new garments of righteousness and the holiness in Christ. And church, we've got to be empowered. Amen. Amen. God is a forgiving God who loves his people, loves us even in our weakest moments. And all he says here today, amen, don't go back to the old life. Remain cleansed. I will remove the stain of sin from your life, right? I mean, back, how many remember back in the days? I remember when, I mean, it was, we got one pair of shoes about, every six months. Nowadays, kids have like 15. I'm like, what? The? I mean, it was a privilege to have just a pair of, you know, Nikes. But I remember before, when school started, right, it starts pretty soon. I mean, I remember when we bought that, I tried them like 15 times before school, right? I mean, we took care of those things. I remember I put them on top of my big box TV. I remember those tube TVs. I mean, I put it up there and I sleep at night. I said, man, those look and then we went to school, and if we got a stain or hot sauce on them, we're like, hey, you know, we're just, e -e 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 -e. I mean, we took care of those things. How much more for the kingdom of God shall we take care of garments that have been given to us, amen, by grace through faith in Jesus Christ? I mean, we got to keep those clean on a daily basis. God, where did I go wrong? I start to pray, God, forgive me, cleanse that spot of sin, and I shall not return, amen, because I am grateful for the garments that God has given me. And you too, like Lazarus, beloved, will rise from that area. We shall remove the garments to find that life. And I want to close just with this scripture here, and we're going to pray. Look what it says here, the banquet. And then he said to his servants, this is a parable, the wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. They rejected the invitation. So go to the street corners and invite, uh, in, and invite to the banquet anyone you find, that is us. So the servants went on into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good. I'm the bad. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. Now look what happens here. But when the king came, this is talking about judgment day, in to see the guests, 
he noticed a man that was not wearing wedding clothes. And he asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes, friend? The man was speechless. And then the king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. What happened here? Jewish culture, just like even now, amen, right? You don't go to a wedding without looking a little formal, amen. And the Jewish tradition was very strict on that. If you were invited to a wedding banquet, there was a certain attire that you were to enter in in respect of the bride and the groom. Dress code. Dress code. Come on, somebody. Amen. And these people, these people that were invited by God walked in and were not wearing that clothes. It's a big deal. And because of that, this represents, amen, the world who says... I've got the religion, but I'm entering in my own way. And the Bible says there, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into darkness where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. Let me just say something tonight, amen. Don't be caught with the wrong clothes. Because Jesus, our Lord, amen, has placed a white garment over us. And it's called us to never return to that gravesite. You say amen with me. Amen. amen. Let's bow our heads together in Jesus' name. We're going to go before that great throne. Amen. God's going to help us tonight. And I'm, sometimes we've got to check our hearts, beloved, because it is so easy for us to be tempted to go back. I've seen some of the one of good friends back in El Paso, Texas. Amen. Serving God at a full capacity. Things didn't go their way and what they do there, I'm going back. This ain't working out. God isn't responding on time. I don't see the results I want. I don't see the hand of God move. And what do they do? They said, I'm going back to that burial site. I'm the old man shall rise again, beloved, amen. But I say, keep those garments on, beloved. Don't be found with a different attire. People forfeiting and backsliding because of things that don't go their way. Hang on to the garment of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm grateful here today as I testify unto you to encourage you. Stay strong. Keep focused. It is always too soon to give up. And God will help us to get through that in Jesus' name. Amen. But I'm going to tell those who are struggling with sin. If you're struggling with sin, beloved, amen. We need to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And with power. 13 years here today, not a perfect man, amen. But I'll tell you what, there's something burning in my heart that says you cannot return. I've had every opportunity to, to walk out. I've had every opportunity, amen, to pick up a, a can, amen, and begin to worship it as I did. But something that is burning within my heart reminds me, amen, to keep on those white garments. Jesus is telling us here today, do not return to the grave, Put the shovel down. Don't allow the old life to overthrow what I have done in your life. And before we leave here today, amen, you are covered in the stain of sin. Beloved, I want to tell you with all my heart, amen, that Jesus loves your life. If that is you here today, beloved, you have not been translated in the kingdom of his son, Jesus Christ. You have not been given white garments cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. And the stain of sin will take you to an everlasting fall. And we can find that today, man. You want to know Jesus Christ. You say, I want to wear the right garments this time. I want you to raise your hand all over this place before we leave. Young to old, it doesn't matter. We will all give an account to the Lord God Almighty. In Jesus' name, anyone at all, amen. From the back, left to right, God bless you. Maybe on the live stream, repent and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's trust in the power of our Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We're going to keep the altar call short. Why don't we stand here tonight? Let us come forward. Amen. I want to pray and believe God for good things in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's cry out to God. Father, we thank you. Although we are not perfect, my Lord. Amen. We trust in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Sinless and perfect was he who came to dwell among his creation, our Lord. 
and we trust in that resurrection power. For the Bible declares that God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. For he promised that that resurrection, even through Lazarus, would be ours at the final day. Give us your strength, God. I mean, so often it is tempting to go back to the impulses of the world and the attitudes and the formulas and patterns of this world. But Lord, you have called us to arise from the grave. By the command and the voice of our Lord, amen, we have brought back into life through our power, the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're here today, amen, to declare that Jesus is Lord. We thank you. Father, help every single one of us. In Jesus' name. Brother Manny, I want to pray for you, my brother. And even here today, come up over here, brother. I know, hey, you know what? <coughs> Just say this, amen. It's so easy for us to want to go back to the past, amen? Amen. But God has called you to be a new man, and I know you are, amen. You have been faithful from the first day that I saw you. You told me the first day you saw me, and what an incredible opportunity we have to serve God. And I want to encourage you, brother, amen, to just live for Jesus, amen. no yes. matter how difficult it is, amen. Be a testimony. Let your children see, amen, that Jesus is living inside of you. And there's going to be times, amen, where we, even both of us, accountability, where I say, brother, you got some grave clothes on. Let's take some of that off. And we unbind it and unbind it and unbind it. And that's what the church is for, holding ourselves accountable. And God loves you, Ben. Uh, I'm sorry, um, Manny. He's going to help you, amen. I want you to lift your hands, brother. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, amen, I thank you for my brother here today. All the brothers of the faith and the sisters as well. But I want to pray for Manny specifically. Amen. For Satan himself longs to sift this man as wheat. Amen. To bring him down. But for as long as he stands on a solid foundation, the solid foundation of Christ, the chief cornerstone that was built on by Christ and the apostles, he will remain firm. Let him combat the enemy with the strength that he once had, even more than he had in the world to fight the true enemy that has been after him since his youth. For this man has been made whole in Jesus Christ, and he shall not return to the grave clothes in which he was delivered from. For God himself shall give you strength and empower you far beyond your ability. He will begin to reveal to you even mysteries that are far beyond comprehension. Only remain faithful, he says. Don't look to the distractions. As the message that was preached this morning, never sign anything that does not belong to you. Your eyes will be opened to begin to reveal mysteries even to your family. You will begin to speak words that will blow the minds off of people that stand before you and even those you pass by, for you will be able to reveal their heart and the issues of their life. And this will only come through the prophetic word of God as you remain faithful. Manny, God has told me this will come soon, okay? Let's trust in him tonight. Father God, bless this man. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, accept your word, I accept your word, for your word is truth, for your word is truth and, it's life. and it's life. Speak to my soul. Speak to my soul. Put, place sensitivity in my spirit. Put sensitivity in my spirit. I want to hear your voice, I want to hear your voice. Because, you are my shepherd, because you are my shepherd, and I am of your fold. I, am of your fold. I give all to you. I give all to you. Help, me Help me with my weaknesses. My weaknesses. You are a forgiving God, are a forgiving and, God. I and I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's give God praise. We thank you, Lord. Amen. God, tonight, amen, for your grace and power. Amen. Bless my brother today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We're going to rejoice tonight. Anyone else need to be untangled from your grave clothes? Amen. Never go back. Amen. None of us here today, don't ever go back to that filthy garment, amen, that defiled us in our past. It is not even worth it. Amen. We have been cleansed. We have been washed. The Bible says we were those people. And on that last day, we're going to be found, amen, to say, well done, good and faithful servant. You got the garments that I was looking for. That's the grace of our Lord and Savior. If you've confessed him as Lord, we believe even tonight, amen. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, eternal security in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's bow our heads together. We're going to leave this place thanking God for all that he's done. Uh, Heavenly Father, we're just here to thank you. Rejoice in all your goodness. Give us strength, God. Amen. Your grace is sufficient for us. Grace is intended for us to flee from the powers of sin. That grace is called to help us. But never let us use grace as a license to sin. It is there for our well-being to, as a guardrail to keep us from further error. We are those who have been cleansed and washed. 
and we are learning from our sin and being sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ. It is by grace we have been saved through faith in our Lord. And we thank you so much, God. Give us our, your blessing tonight, amen. Let your face shine upon all of us throughout this week. Keep us safe, God. Keep our bodies in health. We pray for those that are in weak states and just healing and recovery and the supernatural work of God. We thank you. Bless the congregation. And we send blessing to our brother, Roderick, uh, who is in Carlsbad, Texas. Amen. Bless his life in Jesus' name, we said. Amen. God bless you. Have a good night. Let's see what time. Yep, 738. And let's get ready for work. Amen. God bless you, man.